type situation. Well, I can remember up there, for instance, one of the little things, uh, they would big open dry field, mud, dust, I mean, uh, and there were holes here and there, big enough for two or three guys to get in, yeah. and um, they would have you start on one side and go across there, and at a certain point, why well, a couple of tanks would come out, you know, honest to goodness, military tanks, and they would grind and grunt and they would come at you, and you just had to get in a hole, and you had to stay there and let the tank go over you. Okay. Oh, let me tell you, <laughs> was, that, was that something for her? For a snivelly little kid who'd never been out of out of the house himself, hardly, you know, yeah. to have you, you to have the courage to you knew that that was the only safe place in the whole world. But boy, let me tell you, that was that really took some thinking to make <laughs> your to make you stay there. Yeah, it sounds. Uh, as a matter of fact, in your letter, you, you talked about oh. that and said that at the same time they were playing uh, loudspeakers. The sounds of shells going off oh, and they, men screaming and they stuff. They made it pretty realistic, I yeah. remember. And uh, on occasion, why the tank, I don't remember whether this happened to me or not, but I don't, I've heard it so often from other guys that yeah. the tank would stop over top of one of these holes. Yeah. You know, and then they'd lock one tread and go around with the other tread, you know, and just kind of all but fill up the hole. Holy cow. And because uh, it was just, I wasn't seeing that actually, it was just kind of a pulverized clay type thing. Yeah. Anyhow, they would just scare the bejeevers out of you. Yeah. Uh, they would, now it never happened to me again, but I know in the bottom of a tank between the two treads, mm -hmm. there's a trap door, and uh, they would, the tank guys, they were as much practicing as we were, why they would pull up over one of these holes and they would stop and they would open up a trap door, they'd reach down and they'd heist a guy or two right inside the tank. Just huh. to see if they knew how to do it. Yeah. Wow. And you can imagine, though, that the bus guys in the hole had about two inches of dust all over everything, and in our rifle, of my word, you know, having a tank over top of you. Yeah. Boy, that just stirred everything up. But uh, you survived, and boy, you knew damn well that you had to keep your head down. Huh. And stay put. That's what they wanted you to do, to stay put. And it wasn't until we were on Guam a year later or whatever, when we finally saw some tanks that were on our side. And uh, we knew how to communicate with the people inside. And uh, they had flamethrowers on them that were, you know, long nozzle underneath a cannon. So, but anyhow, wait, we're getting way ahead of ourselves. But anyhow, that you little, bitty, that little bit of blurb you know, that we had back at Camp yeah. Elliot, yeah. why that made us realize that there were real honest to goodness live people inside the, that thing here. You, know, yeah. you could communicate with them, and huh. they were more dependent on us than we were on them. Huh. Because a tank by itself, without any infantry around it, yeah. is just a sitting duck for a gasoline bottle and so on and so forth thrown down the engine and the yeah. guys as they peel out whammo they don't even get off the tank before they're shot yeah. Yeah. so they liked having us around huh. because then they could not get into too much trouble Yeah. and we liked having them around because it was a real ego trip to have a couple of three like four it. tanks going your, in your direction yeah, you, know? right. you didn't ride on them or anything else but uh, less naked sort of right is the it was proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that man, when you had a when you had a tank or two or three in front of you, moving just as steady as they could, and yeah. machine gun fire coming out of those things. Good Lord, I can't imagine how they have that many, how many that many machine gun belts or whatever inside yeah. there. And uh, they would just mow the grass down and the trees and everything else right in front of them. Yeah. And everybody, Japanese caves, you name it, whatever. They would just pull their heads in, which means they were shooting at us, so we could literally follow the tank or go on the same line as the tank. And, and uh, when we would come to a hole or something that way, down would go three, four, five concussion grenades. And, uh, and uh, 
we knew that they were pulling their heads in. Yeah, you sort of get them on the defensive. Right, and we had we were standing up and looking at them, at them and moving about, and they temporarily would pull their heads in long enough for us to move up the side of the hill or whatever, yeah. and secure supposedly the stuff as we passed it. You know. Anyhow, though, that tank training that was good. Pretty it was, and uh, they're a frightening thing. They really are. That they would be, especially if they're pulling over you. <laughs> yeah, right, yes. Just, yeah. oh, yeah. gives you nightmares. 